Hello makers, welcome to the Make Stuff Shed. My name's Chris and in this video I want to show you how we can control the flow of electrons around a circuit. Let's take a closer look. For this exercise we're going to show you how to use an LED to demonstrate the flow of electrons around a circuit. Just like that. But before we do that, check this out. Whew. Hey guys, I'm here outside of Underhill House in Gateshead. And this might look like an old house, but it's really, really important. It was the first place, not just in the Northeast, not just in the UK, but in the whole world to be wired and lit by these things, incandescent light bulbs. Now the guy who used to own this house was called Joseph Swan, and he was well known for his work on the incandescent light bulb. Okay, that's really, really cool. Which reminds me, let's get back to the shed. <laughs> okay, makers, electronics is all about controlling the flow of electrons. Now, all of these bits of metal allow electrons to pass through them. And as the electrons pass through them, they affect the components in different ways. Okay, so right now I want to show you how to build a circuit that makes an LED light up. And to do that, we're going to need some bits from our Make Stuff starter kit. Our Make Stuff board. A USB to micro USB lead. Two male to female jumper wires. An LED. It doesn't have to be yellow. And a teeny tiny resistor. But before we get started, it's time for a Make Stuff Breakdown. Now, on our Make Stuff board, we've got a component called a breadboard. Now, I know that this doesn't actually look like a breadboard. The name is a historical reference because makers of the past used to build their circuits on a breadboard, just like this. They screwed the components in. We kept the name. Now let's take a look at the breadboard on our Make Stuff board. But before we start, don't try this at home, kids. Now, here's the breadboard, but if I turn it over, you'll see that I've removed the back. And by doing that, we can see all of the strips of metal that make the breadboard up. We've got two long ones on either side, and we call these buses. So the long strips are buses. And then we've got shorter ones running across the center, and they're divided by a trench. OK, if I bring another breadboard in on the side, we can actually see how that works. So on either side, we've got two long strips, one for the positive, one for the negative, And then we've got these shorter strips running across the middle. And we can also see that they've got coordinates on them. So A1 is just here. Now that you know how breadboards work, let's put that knowledge to use. Now, the first thing we need to do is to provide power to our Raspberry Pi. And we're going to do that using a USB to micro USB lead. And this comes in your Make Stuff starter kit. Now I'm going to provide power to this using my laptop. But you don't have to use a laptop to provide power. You could use one of these Or you could even use a Raspberry Pi charger like this. But because it comes in the kit, we're going to use this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is plug this end into my laptop. Just like this. Then we're going to take the micro USB end and we're going to plug it into our Raspberry Pi. And when we do that, the Raspberry Pi becomes a power source. So we can see that because the LEDs are on. Now we're going to use our components to build a circuit. So the first thing we're going to do is take one of these male to female jumper wires, doesn't matter about the colour, and we're going to plug it into this top pin. OK, we're going to put the female end over the top pin. Then we're going to take the spiky end and plug it into A1 on the breadboard. What that means now is that the electrons can travel along the jumper wire and into this strip of metal. Now they end here. So what we're going to do is put another component in. We're going to use our resistor and we're going to plug it into D1 and we're going to take it over the trench to G1. And what that means is the electrons can now pass from this metal strip over to this metal strip on this side. 
and we're then going to take our LED. Now be careful with this one makers because our LED has got two legs, a long leg and a short leg. We're going to put the long leg into J1 and we're going to put the short leg into any hole on this blue bus on this side. So long leg into J1, short leg over there. Now the LED hasn't lit up because we haven't actually completed our circuit. To do that we're going to take our second male to female jumper lead and we're going to plug it into the top hole of the bus. And then we're going to take this end and plug it over six. So six is the third one down on the outside. And when we do that, our LED is lit up. The electrons are flowing down this jumper wire into this strip of metal, through the resistor into this strip of metal, through the LED making it light up, and then back into the Raspberry Pi. It's made! Well done makers, you've just created your first circuit and made an LED light up. Now if you can do this, you can use your knowledge and other bits from your Make Stuff Starter Kit to create your own circuits. And that's what we want you to do guys, we want you to play around with these things and make your own stuff. To demonstrate that, let's take a look at three projects that other young makers have created with their Make Stuff Starter Kit. Check out Oscar's cat or Elsie's vampire, and Ruby's six star design. Whoa! Thanks for joining me in the shed today, makers. We've looked at how circuits work, how to build circuits, what a breadboard is, we visited Underhill House, and we built a circuit that makes an LED light up. Until the next time you head to the shed, get out there and make stuff.